So you've got a brand new bike. Well, today I'm gonna to be talking about how to set this up and make it feel absolutely personalized and customized to you. So stay tuned. One will always be setting your saddle height so it's appropriate for you and your legs, obviously. But you wanna start with this because this affects everything else like your saddle position and also maybe even your levers and your handlebar position. So we start here and I always go for matching the pedal to saddle height to my inseam as it's a very safe number to start with and it should prevent you from getting knee pain or back pain. However, I have done a more detailed detailed video about this and four different formulas that you can use if you want to and I will leave that link in the description below if you want more details. So now you've set the saddle height on your bike you can sort out the saddle position. So this will mean unscrewing the saddle bolts and getting the fore and aft position sorted, which is the forwards and backwards movement, and also the tilt on the saddle as well. Now, I always start with the fore and aft because that's quite important. This will make sure that you don't have too much strain on the knee, and it will also give you a very efficient pedaling stroke as well. So what you wanna do is get your pedals in a three o'clock, six o'clock position and your forward leg or your three o'clock position, uh, you, what you want to do is get your knee directly above that pedal. So you shouldn't be too far back as this will put strain on the knee and you shouldn't be too far forward as well because that will put some strain on the knee in a different way. Now you can just eye this up if you want to, uh, but ideally you can get a weight on a piece of string and dangle that from the knee and see if the weight hangs just in front of the pedal and that's the most accurate way. However, if you don't have that, then you can watch yourself in a mirror or ask a really nice friend to help you out with this. So once you've got a fore and aft position that you're happy with, what I would suggest is if you don't have any measurements on the side of your rail, which you can memorize, then you might wanna get a marker pen and just make a little mark so that you know where your saddle should be because sometimes it does slip when you're working out the tilt. So when it comes to tilt, obviously you can have it forwards or backwards or level. Now I would always suggest going with a perfectly level position to start with uh, just because it's quite neutral especially if you don't know what you're going to be doing on your bike for starters however you can play with this over time so if you find that you have too much pressure building up on the front of the saddle then maybe you want to drop that nose a little bit to relieve the pressure also if you're doing more enduro style riding for example you only sit in the saddle when you're climbing but you're out of the saddle for single track and descents some people like to have a nose down position too, so that when your bike is pointed up on the climbs, it's level, but it won't be affecting you when you're descending because obviously you'll be out of the saddle and that will be down. So like I said, go for a neutral position if you can. Uh, eye it up and then tighten it up and you should be good to go. So now that your saddle is set, you can start changing the cockpit and making that customized for you in your neutral riding position. So what I mean by that is that you feel comfortable sat on the bike and pedaling uphill or pedaling long distances. Uh, if your handlebars are too low, you might get a bit of strain or lower back ache. If your handlebars are too high, you might feel quite upright. You might get discomfort um, in the glutes on the saddle but you also might find that your steering becomes quite vague and unresponsive. So this is something that you're gonna to have to play with over time. There's no magic formula, but I'm gonna show you how to do it so you feel confident changing this in the future. 
So to change the height of your stem or your handlebars, you'll need to release this bolt at the top, which is your headset bolt, and you'll need to release the stem bolts. And what this allows you to do is to take off that stem and this top cap and rearrange the stack of these spaces underneath your stem. So if you wanted to lower your stem, you'll be taking one or two of these off perhaps and putting them on the top. Or if you're wanting to raise your stem, then perhaps you need to get yourself some spaces to put underneath. So undoing it is a simple procedure because you're just releasing all of the bolts on the stem and the top cap. Now, in order to get the stem off, once you've released these bolts, you're gonna to need to unwind this completely and this top cap will come up. Now, this top screw actually screws into usually a star nut inside the steerer tube of your fork and that's what compresses the front all together. And once that's out and these bolts are loose, you can actually lift off your stem. So, like, ta-da. And then depending on what sort of stem spaces you've got underneath there, you can usually just lift them up, put the stem back down, and then put them on top. Now, make sure you keep that stack order because you will need a gap at the top of your steerer tube in order to create a good enough clamp to keep your forks in and to stop your headset from rattling. Now, the really important part is reassembling this and the order in which you need to do this. So you want to start with the top cap here, as, like I said, this clamps the forks and the headset and all the front of the bike together. And you'll be doing this by hand, effectively, until you get a little bit of resistance. You don't want to push it too far as you could pull the nut out from the inside of the steerer tube. And effectively, what you're doing is making sure that that headset is no longer wobbly or knocking. So once you feel that little bit of resistance, you can apply the front brake and rock your bike forwards and backwards, make sure there's no wobbling or knocking inside the headset, and that should be done up tight enough. And once you've done that, then you can tighten up the stem bolts. And these are things that you're gonna need to torque. Usually it will say on your stem bolts what torque spec it needs. Uh, otherwise, if it doesn't, go and consult the manual. So what I like to do in order to make sure that everything's straight again is to stand over the wheel and hold the wheel with my knees and then I can move the handlebars until they are perfectly in line with the crown of the forks. And that way I know everything's straight. And what I'll do is just nip these up, tighten it up by hand with my Allen key. And then you need to get a Torx wrench and torque those up properly to the manufacturer's spec. So you might look like this or something like this to make sure that that doesn't come loose while you're riding. Now, naturally, you're going to want some handlebars that fit you as well, because if they're too wide, they're going to be tough on steering. If they're too narrow, they might be tough on your shoulders. So hopefully you'll have an idea of what you want. If not, then maybe start with something that's a little bit wider than your shoulders or just go out and ride and figure out whether they are too wide and start to come in by five or 10 mil at a time. However, we have done more detailed videos on how to cut bars down because you will need different types of blades depending on the material of your handlebars. So I will leave the link in the description below. So do check out that video to get an idea of how to cut them down. And I'll also leave a link in the description of how to get an idea of what size you need and what sort of sweep and rise you also need as well um, as I've done a video that's more in depth about how to choose the right size. So now that your saddle's set and your handlebar height is set and width, hopefully, then you can start playing with the levers to get them feeling customized for you. Now, what I mean by that is making sure that any dropper levers or gear levers are close enough for you to reach with your thumb. Now you shouldn't have to move your hands in order to activate them. Uh, and that might mean taking both levers off and swapping them around to get them either closer to you or maybe even further away. And then you can also adjust the fore and after position in order to get them right for the ergonomics of your hands. 
And once you've got your gear and dropper levers the right way round to your brakes, then I would go in with getting the position of your brakes correct. Now for me, I loosen these slightly so that they can move on the bars, get myself into the riding position that feels comfortable for me. And generally I would move my brakes until the line on my forearm and my wrist and my finger are relatively straight. And this is just a nice neutral position that won't put too much pressure on your wrists, uh, especially if you're new to the sport. Now, as you progress, you may feel like you want to change these. Some people like a more upwards position so that they can put pressure on the grips and give themselves more strength behind the bars. But again, this is very much a personal preference thing and you wanna start somewhere and feel confident that you're going to move them in the future if needs be. Okay, last but by no means least is setting up your suspension. Uh, now the first thing you want to do is to set the sag on your suspension. And sag is how much movement or how much you sag into your suspension when you're sat on your bike. Uh, now I would do this in my riding kit because you could add a few pounds or kilos uh, depending on how much kit you wear. And manufacturers will give you a recommendation for your sag. So for example, RockShox may suggest that the lyrics that I've got on this bike here should be run at 30% sag. So what I would need to do is sit on the bike in my riding kit and see if when I reset the O-ring on that fork, if that moves 30% of the travel so that I know that the suspension is not too firm and not too soft for me. It's a good baseline to start with and you can of course adjust this over time as you get used to your bike. So you can do this in a stand or you can lean against a wall, but you effectively want to move any O-rings down towards the main or the lowers or the main air can. And then we're getting on the bike and putting our entire body weight on there and gently come off. And then that O-ring will have marked how much movement or how much sag I now have on the bike. Now RockShox kindly puts the percentage measurements on the shocks and usually the forks as well to give me a good understanding of what sort of percentage sag I have achieved here. However, if you have a different brand, you can use a ruler or a measuring tape to measure how much that O-ring has moved by and then divide that number by the stroke of the shock or the travel of the forks so that you can work out the percentage. So to give you an example, my O-ring has only moved 20 millimeters out of 150 mils of travel on my forks there. So 20 divided by 150 and times it by 100 will give you a percentage of 13%. So 30% uh, is supposed to be 45 millimeters and I'm only running 13% there. So obviously they are too firm for me right now. So I need to release a bit of air until I can get to that sweet 45 mils of movement. Now, once you've set your sag, you'll know what air pressure is in your shock or your forks. And then you can go to the manual on your shock or forks and usually they will give you some baseline settings uh, for any adjustments that you have. So you may have compression dials at the top, you may have rebound dials at the bottom. And sometimes manufacturers will give you a few baseline settings. So for example, how many clicks of rebound you should have according to how much air is in those forks. And I would always start there if you're not sure where to start. Of course, that is just a baseline and this is personal preference. So when you're out on the trail, don't be afraid to adjust those dials to see if it makes it better or worse for you. I would recommend only moving one of the dials at a time and maybe only using one or two clicks at a time to see how that feels. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is a bonus step, but it's really important. And it's the fun bit because you get to take your bike out and test ride it. Potentially dedicate a whole day to checking that your bike is set up for you and try bracketing, which means moving from one extreme to the other and seeing what makes things better and what makes things worse so that you can identify what fit and feel is best for you on your bike. Now, as I said, with suspension, play with one dial at a time, maybe two clicks at a time. And if it comes to any geometry changes, like for example, changing your handlebar height or changing your saddle height, try to only adjust those things by five or 10 mil at a time, because that can feel like quite a big movement and it can change your position on the bike and it could give you an injury or some aches and pains if you take it too far. Also, your body has a really good way of learning bad habits. So you might have to ride it for one or two rides in order for your body to unlearn a bad habit and get used to a new position. Okay, well, hopefully that has helped you make your bike feel absolutely personalized and customized to you. But don't forget to check out our other videos. I've left three links in the description below of choosing the right handlebars, cutting your handlebars, and also a more in-depth look at what saddle height you should be going for. So do check those out if you want more tips. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Bye.